In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how I scaled my Amazon FBA business from zero to £2,000 a month in profit in just nine months. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so welcome back for another video. If you didn't know who I am, my name is Christos Fellas and I have created this YouTube channel to dedicate myself to helping you guys make more money online. So if that is something you are interested in, then I would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But let's get straight into this video. So this video is all going to be about my Amazon FBA business and how I have scaled it from earning zero pounds to earning two thousand thousand pounds profit per month every month in just nine months time so what I'm going to do is take you down on the screen below right about now and yes as we can see hope you like the edit in there by the way as you can see this video like I said is all about how I scale from zero to two thousand pound profit in nine months so there's a couple of things that we need to talk about before we actually get into the journey over the last nine months for myself and that is everyone's situation is completely different so mine to yours yours to someone else's everyone's journey is going to be completely different so please do not use this video as a comparison to how you are. You could even be further ahead in your journey than me. And there are so many things that could potentially change the path of someone's journey, especially when it comes to selling on Amazon FBA. So just to go through a couple of mine, I had a starting capital of 500 pounds. You could have one of 5,000 pounds. You could have one of 50 pounds. So that would obviously make a massive difference on how quickly you scale up at the start. Um, one of the biggest factors for me is that I have only been doing this part time alongside my other income streams. So as you may well know, I do also have a full time job. I have obviously dedicated a lot of time to creating this YouTube channel and then I have some various other streams as well. So time can be a massive factor to how quickly you scale up your Amazon business. Um, another thing that could work in a plus on my side, um, because I have the full time job is that 100% of my profits for my Amazon business are completely reinvested. So if you were actually using this as a source of income, you may not be able to scale up as quick because you're going to have to take profits out of your business to obviously pay your bills. Another one, and this one's a little bit less important important is that I actually work all of my businesses out of my small two bedroom apartment in the city center of Norwich. Um, the reason I've added that in there is because when it comes to doing Amazon FBA and prepping shipments, time and space can be a little bit limited in this apartment. So I'm not able to order those big wholesale orders. I'm not able to get pallets in and stuff like that. So that is something that has definitely limited me to scaling up over the last nine months. But yeah, they are just the four main factors that really had a massive effect over the last nine months which I've been able to look back at and recognize like I said everyone's is going to be different I don't expect anyone to be in exactly the same position as me um, so please do not use this video as a comparison so um, let's get straight into my journey and I'm going to take you all the way back to day number one and that is when I was thrifting so when I was at this point in my journey one of the great things that I recognized early was that I had to have a strategy and and my strategy with this was I had to buy things at a low cost with a high ROI and they needed to be selling fast. So it was a nice clear strategy that I had. And basically what I did there was I looked at used books. So used books, board games and like video games as well, media that was great. The ones that I wasn't restricted in. So a lot of DVDs I was restricted in. It was more than new and used video games and the places that I got these were places like charity shops, car boot sales, I was also using Facebook Marketplace a lot and just Gumtree as well but the main place was really charity shops and um, th this was actually probably one of the most fun times of being an Amazon seller because I was so new to it and when you buy something at a pound and you sell it potentially for 30 or 40 pounds you know, the feeling of that is just, you can't compare it to any other sale or any other Amazon business model in my opinion because the ROI is just amazing. But yeah, 
really, really fun time actually sourcing at these charity shops. Like I said, um, there's nothing better than buying something for a pound and selling it for 30 pounds online. It doesn't matter what business model you do. There's nothing more exciting than doing something like that, in my opinion. Um, but just talking about goals, like you see my goals are down the bottom right there. Um, one of the main goals that I set was in the first month was I wanted to get that pro account. So if you didn't know about the pro account um, and the difference between that and an individual account, what I'll do is I'll leave a link and a video up in the top corner that just basically explains the differences between the two. But one of my first goals was I wanted to be making 40 sales per month so that I could upgrade to that pro account. So um, that was one of the main goals. And I obviously hit that very, very quickly. And everybody that sells on Amazon FBA that does it properly and uses the FBA model in the right way will soon realize the same thing. Um, it sounds like a lot at the start. Um, especially coming from an eBay background, but as soon as you get going, you'll start to realize how quickly you can start to sell 40 units per month. But yeah, just going on to the overview about my thrifting months, um, just some things to think about is I was using all free software at the time, so I started with no money. Like I said, I had the 500 pounds in capital, but I'd not invested in any softwares. At the time, Keeper was actually free. Now you have to actually pay for Keeper. Um, one of the main things that I noticed when doing this was that it took a very long time. So actually driving to individual charity shops, scanning every single product in the charity shop, which I thought would return a profit. Sometimes, like I said below here, I would leave empty handed. But the good thing about doing all of this was this was a really good introduction to Amazon. This was taking zero shortcuts. I was learning about sales history. I was learning how to read charts. And I was doing everything at minimal risk because the cost of the products that I was buying was so low. So that was a really good point which I got to learn a lot about Amazon. And like I said, you could easily just jump into online arbitrage or wholesale, but you would be really skipping over the basics. And like I said, just below there, um, I actually gave me some time to spend researching into RA and online arbitrage without just diving headfirst into it. So really, really happy that I started out this way. And if you are just starting out on Amazon, I highly recommend just even if you've got loads of capital, just going out into some charity shops, scanning some used books and just getting used to that Amazon app, learning about Keeper data and such and such. And that leads me nicely into months three to seven where I was really focusing on retail arbitrage. So my goals for this period of time were a little bit ambitious and like we were talking about before, I had that main goal and the main goal for these months were to consistently make 1,000 pounds in profit per month. And I knew from my experience from thrifting what I needed to do in terms of the mini goals I needed to set to achieve that. So the first thing that I noticed was that I was restricted in a lot of products when I was out thrifting. And I knew that if I was going to scale my business, I would need to get ungated in a lot of products, especially when I'm moving into online arbitrage and wholesale. So one of the mini goals that I'd set myself during this time was to get ungated in as many things as possible. Another thing that I talked about was that the time that it took for me to do all of the thrifting, the driving to the stores, the sourcing products. And then on top of that, I had to obviously record sales and do all of the admin bits, which I didn't actually talk about. So one of the things that I noticed I needed to do as soon as possible was to start automating areas of the business. And we'll talk about that in the next slide. So when we got to month number five, which is actually halfway through my retail arbitrage phase, I hit the turning point. And this is what I was talking about when I was talking about automating your business. So one of the things that I realized straight away that I needed to outsource and scale my business in order to grow. And I can honestly deep down, hand on heart, say that this is the best lesson and the most important thing that I've learned so far as an Amazon seller is that if you want to grow, even as any business that you need to scale, you need to invest 
in your business. And I thought that I could just be a one man band and I could do everything by myself at the start. But as soon as I started, just those small little investments into my business, I realized the power of outsourcing. So basically I couldn't maintain what I was doing all at once. So I was doing my obviously my full-time job, the YouTube channel. I've said about this so many times that I'm such a busy person and I'm going to need help. So as I said before, my goals for these months was to consistently hit £1,000 a month in profit. And what I said to myself when I hit this turning point was that when I made my first £1,000 in profit, I was going to invest into some areas that were really holding me back. So the first first thing that was really holding me back was that every time I was buying a product and making a sale, I was tracking everything down on an Excel sheet. I am absolutely terrible with Excel. It was probably taking around 20 to 25 hours per week, me just tracking everything in, looking for everything, you know, trying to find all the products. And the more products I bought, the more time I was spending on Excel instead of actually growing my business. So the first thing that I bought was Sellerboard and they do have a 60 day free trial, but basically Sellerboard, all they are is a profit analytics tool. It cannot be used for accounting, but all you have to do is put the price of the products that you're buying in once and then it will link to your Amazon account and it will just do everything for you. It will tell you how much profit you're making, how much VAT you're paying, if you're paying any, um, how much money you're spending on advertising, how much is going towards Amazon fees. It just does everything, um, which is a, it's a really good product. Um, and that was the first investment I bought and I realized straight away the amount of time that I was saving which would then free up to go out and do more sourcing. So the second thing that I was realizing that was taking a lot of my time wasn't so much the sourcing of products, it was more so analyzing the actual product. So personally, um, not so much now, but I used to be a very, very indecisive person. I could never really make a firm decision there and then on the spot. And this really did carry over to my Amazon business. So I was finding products in retail stores, I was finding them online, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and I was taking a very, very long time making a decision whether or not I should buy that product. And then I've looked into BuyBot Pro, which obviously you've heard me talk about before if you have watched my channel, and it has just saved me so much time. So normally per product, I was spending around 30 to 40 minutes maybe analyzing it through Keeper, looking at sales rank charts, um, and doing all kinds of other stuff, trying to convince myself that it was a good purchase. But as soon as I invested in BuyBot Pro and I had all the data in front of me, that went down to about about five to 10 minutes per product, which I was sourcing. That was the time I spent to analyze that product. So another massive time saver, which obviously once again, allowed me to then go and spend more time sourcing and growing my business. So the third investment I decided to make was a very straightforward and easy decision to make, and that was to improve my accounting software. So like just with the analytics, I was doing everything on paper, I was printing out my invoices, and I thought it's time to take things online. And that's when I signed up to QuickBooks. If you didn't know what QuickBooks is, it is an online accounting software which basically ties to your bank account and, and whenever you make purchases on that bank account, it will automatically get tracked in QuickBooks and then you can assign your receipts to it and just take everything online. And my accountant loves it, so um, it was a really good purchase for me and once again, a massive massive time saver. So that really was the turning point for me at that five month mark there when I realized that if I could outsource the things that were taking too much time and that were a bit pointless in me doing, then I could spend more time focusing on growing my business, which is something I obviously wish I learned straight away. But like I said, this is all part of being on this journey and everyone's journey is different. It doesn't matter if you learn about things like this in month five or month 25. The main important 
important thing to realize is that you are improving month on month. So just to talk about a couple of the things that I noticed when doing retail arbitrage was that yes, it still did take a long time. I was still having to drive to the retail stores, still having to source manually. Um, I didn't have the capacity to pay for someone to do that for me at the time. But one thing I did notice when comparing it back to my thrifting days was that the ROI with retail arbitrage is going to be much lower than used books. However, the sell-through rate is going to be much higher because people are on Amazon to buy new products more so than used. So it's just a give take thing. It's always going to happen. And really the other thing was that Buybot Pro opened me up to the world of online arbitrage, which really just leads me at to where I'm actually at now, month seven, all the way through to now, I think we're in month like 18, and that is online arbitrage. So I've been doing online arbitrage now for, like I said, about seven or eight months and it's just where I'm at with my journey now. But back then, um, on month seven, my goal was then to make consistently £2,000 in profit per month. And then obviously after talking all about outsourcing, the next big goal for me and milestone was to outsource my sourcing. It's a bit of a tongue twister, but that was the next thing that was taking so much of my time. Um, so that was one of the next goals that I set. And then another goal for me here was to source products with less competition. So from doing my retail arbitrage, I was sourcing a lot of toys and this is one of the most in competition products that you can source for and I was noticing that the price was tanking a lot. Um, there were so many sellers on a individual listing which was taking a lot longer to sell my product, especially if I wanted to wait out a little bit and sell it at a profit. So I wanted to start looking at products and categories with less competition. I also wanted it in this phase to start looking at multi-packs and bundles because once again, multi-packs and bundles are not basic and vanilla arbitrage, so they're going to naturally have less competition with them. And then I also wanted to build a replenishable list. So if you didn't know what a replenishable is, Basically, a replenishable is a product that would be bought at full price that you could constantly reorder from a store, send it into Amazon and make a consistent profit. Like I said, replenishables is something we can go into more in another video, but that was just another one of my goals. But I still wanted, as you can see there, is to still do a day a week retail arbitrage as, like I have said before, it's always good to diversify your sourcing methods and just the different types of products that you are sourcing. Products I was sourcing, once again, toys and games. I will always source toys and games as long as the margins and the profit is in them. But I was saying before, I wanted categories and products with less competition, and a couple of those would be health and beauty products seem to have a little bit less competition, and especially groceries. People do not even know to this day that you can buy groceries on Amazon and then obviously like I was saying multi packs and bundles naturally have less competition because they are harder to do and harder to find. Strategy with online arbitrage once again because it's becoming easier and more widespread the minimum ROI has to go down so we've put that down to 30% now. Max buy cost isn't gone up at all. I still want to be sourcing products at a low cost. Like I said, I would rather buy lots of cheap items than just go all in on one product or buy a load of expensive products that if you get a return, you could be absolutely screwed on those. So one of the main changes in my strategy here, because I had a lot more capital at this stage to invest in products, I was actually happier to wait a little bit longer for sales. So I wasn't just price matching everything. I was actually holding out for some products just to get that extra profit because I had the capital to keep reinvesting. The only time I would get a little bit more competitive is when my capital was getting low and I needed to make more money to get back to go again and reinvest. And obviously my strategy here is focusing on finding those replenishable. So it doesn't matter if I spent two hours, three hours, and not finding a product. If I could find one replenishable in that three hours, that would be massive to me and even better than finding maybe six or seven clearance hours because that replenishable I can keep ordering for months to come. And like I did with all the other ones, I have a video here of me sourcing online arbitrage products that you are more 
than welcome to check out. So talking about from months seven to nine in terms of how they went for me, the first thing that I did was I invested into online arbitrage deals. Like most things in this video, I also have a video for that, so feel free to go and find that. But I did that halfway through month seven when I was earning around 1,200 pounds profit a month. Online arbitrage deals is quite an expensive software, so I wanted to make sure I was making progress with my business before I invested in that. So one of the main things that happened during this time was that I started to find replenishable items, and I cannot stress how important these are for your business. So replenishable items are literally the backbone of your business. They take zero time to source. All you have to do is when they're running low is just reorder. It's almost like a private label model, but just getting them from a retail store. So I was starting to find them building up my replenishable list. And as I built that up, I was seeing a much more consistent profit. And whilst those and the online arbitrage deals were coming in pretty much on autopilot this just freed up all my time to head out on my computer and obviously in retail stores and just focus on manual sourcing so it was almost like my online arbitrage deals and my replenishables were just my consistent profits and then when I found anything manually it was just a bonus for me and finally the only real setback or maybe not a setback, more of a hurdle that I noticed was obviously because we were making more sales, we had more capital, which means we were buying more products, was that more time was going to be spent on the prepping and the shipping phase. But there is a solution to that, which I'm going to talk about in the next slide. So that really just leads me into the future. It's kind of what I'm doing right now, but back then it was the future, if you get what I mean. So the first thing I wanted to do was to get my profits up to that £3,000 a month area. And the reason I say that is not because it was in trend of one, two, and the second one, and then three. It was actually because I knew at £3,000 a month, I could then start investing into having my products handled by a prep center. So what a prep center basically is, is that you can do all of your orders online when doing online arbitrage, and instead of getting them shipped to your house, you can get them shipped to a prep center and then obviously pay a per item fee. There's so many prep centers out there, just do your research on Google and find one, but I will just leave a dedicated one in the description below if you wanted just to click on one then. Um, but yeah, basically a prep center was the final key in the uh, journey. I'm actually currently dipping in and out of different prep centers at the moment, just trying to learn a little bit more about them, which doesn't really give me the capacity to talk too much about them on camera. But I do know that once I start using them consistently, that my business will be 90% outsourced, which is one of my goals, especially in the next couple of months, which will then allow me to focus on creating more content for you guys. So one thing that I've spoken about before is that Amazon for me isn't all about money. My passion really does lie in creating content, helping others, getting comments from you guys um, literally just means the world to me. It just thrives me to keep making more YouTube comment, which actually reminds me, leave me a comment below if you are enjoying this video. But yeah, hopefully if I can outsource my business, my Amazon business, I can really focus more on YouTube because this is where my passion lies. So as we said, everybody's journey is going to be different when it comes to scaling a business. But if I could give you some key takeaways from this video to take forward with you in the future, and that would be number one, do not go all out on software at the start. So I know I spoke about how I wish I knew about these softwares and scaling and outsourcing earlier on, but what you need to realize is that these are all things that save you time. They don't teach you to become a better Amazon seller. As I mentioned, in the first three months of my journey, I was doing everything with zero products or softwares at all. I was learning about sales charts. I was learning about Amazon. And I think that's really important, especially when you are starting out. Another lesson is something I didn't actually mention in the video, and that is to connect with others. Join Facebook groups, communities, and learn how other people scale their businesses. Don't compare yourselves with them, but just take advice from them on what they did to scale their business. Because like I said, everyone's journey is different, so everyone's gonna have different
different pieces of value to give. I actually have a Facebook group myself, if you didn't know already, I will leave a link in the description below. It is called the Amazon Reseller Network and it has loads of different people all on different paths and different journeys, all sharing their experiences, tips and obviously asking questions as well which is very very valuable and i highly recommend you join it if you haven't already if you want to learn more about amazon and once again one more final time just to reiterate everybody is on that different path in this game it's you against you everyone's story everyone's situation is going to be different so make sure you have that in the back of your head at all times we all can be a little bit of a victim to comparing ourselves with others i can certainly admit i have done it in the past so don't be ashamed if you have done but just remember it's you against you but yeah that's going to do it for the video today guys like i mentioned join that facebook group if you haven't already leave a like on the video if you got some value from it and of course comment below with anything that you want to talk about subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and i shall see you guys in the next video cheers